Senegal will soon join the ranks of offshore oil producers. Senegal is in northwest Africa, highlighted here in green. If you want to see some of our other videos from West Africa, there's three suggestions here. You'll find the links in the description below. There's Belen in Cote d'Ivoire, the giant Jubilee field in Ghana, and a recent video that we put out looking at recent news and future activity in the exciting Orange Basin of Namibia. If we zoom in and have a closer look at Senegal, you can see here a Sangamar field right on the border with the Gambia. Sangamar is located in the Rufisk Sangamar and Sangamar Deep Blocks within the MSGBC Basin. It was discovered by Cairn in 2014 by the SNA-1 well at a water depth of about 1,100 metres. Since then, it's been appraised by more than 10 wells. Both oil and gas were found in Cretaceous sandstone reservoirs at a depth of about 2,600 metres TVD subsea. The stirrup is estimated to be up to about 3.6 billion barrels of oil equivalent, with recoverable reserves in the range of about 500 to 650 million bowies. Sangamar is one of those rare examples where the post-drill results actually exceed the pre-drill expectations. Pre-drill, Sangamar was known as Lupa Lupa and was predicted to have 154 million barrels prospective resource. Sangamar is operated by Woodside Energy with 82% interest and Petrosen makes up the other 18%. The operatorship has passed from Hunt to Far to Cairn when the Discovery Well is drilled, on to ConocoPhillips and then finally to Woodside when they've acquired ConocoPhillips 35% stake in 2016 in a deal worth 430 million US dollars. Four years later, Woodside acquired Cairns 40% stake in a deal worth $400 million. Cairn Energy have since rebranded, of course, to Capricorn Energy. And in 2021, Woodside acquired Far Limited's 14% stake in a deal worth up to $180 million. So to date, they've already spent over a billion US dollars before even a single barrel of oil has been produced. And that is only to acquire their stake in the license not for any development work to be carried out. Note there's a slight discrepancy in the interest Woodside has acquired, 89%, compared to their current stake, 82%. This is simply due to Petrosen also up in their interest slightly at some point. If we have a look at the depositional setting, we can see how Cairn thought the Sangamar Reservoir was deposited. Here we can see this carbonate platform and the shelf edge run along here, and the slope running down here. We can also see the source rock interval highlighted. The Sangamar field is picked out by these SNE wells, with the reservoir interpreted to be early Albion, Sandy, Pro Delta Turbidite apron, and Delta Fed ramp. You can see the Delta fund up here highlighted in green. Sands would have been shed off this shelf down the slope, where you get base of slope turbidite fans and some axial reworking by contourites. Here we see the Fan and Fan South discoveries. These are late Albion sands. We'll go on to talk a little bit more about these two discoveries in a bit. Sangamar is set to be a phased development with first oil expected in mid-2024. Phase 1 will see 23 production, gas and water injector wells. Drilling of these commenced in July 2021. Phase 1 will target 230 million barrels at a predicted cost of up to 5.2 billion US dollars. Gas produced in Phase 1 will be re-injected. You can see on this schematic field layout below the FPSO at the top here and the 23 wells each with their own subsea tree. Woodside will make a decision in 2025 on Phase 2 once more well data can be analysed. Phase 2 would plan to unlock an additional 250 million bowies at a cost estimate of about 2.5 billion US dollars, with 33 additional wells, 16 producers and 17 water injectors. Production will be through an FPSO, the FPSO Leopold Sedar Senghor, which has oil production capacity of 100,000 barrels of oil per day, gas production capacity of 130 million standard cubic feet a day, and storage capacity of 1.3 million barrels. 
It will be permanently mirrored at a water depth of approximately 780 metres by an external turret mooring system. It's named after Senegal's first president. And we see here from Key Facts Energy that the FPSO has arrived in Senegal in February 2024. So let's have a little look at the nearby FAN discovery. It was discovered one month before Sangamar in 2014. It is 24 kilometers from the SNE-1 well, which is a Sangamar discovery well. And despite discovering over 500 meters gross reservoir thickness, it did not encounter an oil water contact. You can see that discovery on the map down here. And if we look to the south, you see FAN South, which was drilled three years later and also discovered oil. Since then, appraisal focused on Sangamar, and in fact Woodside relinquished these two discoveries in 2022 to focus on the Sangamar development. The FAN discovery is thought to have around 200 million barrels of oil recoverable, and we think there's around 130 million barrels in FAN South, but there's only one well in both of these discoveries, so more work would have to be done to confirm these resource numbers. If you look at the cross section at the top, you can see oil being produced in the source interval here and migrating up into FAN and then further on up onto the shelf edge play where we find Sangamar. So what next? Well, in the north of Senegal, on the border with Mauritania, BP's Greater Tortu Amayim project is also set to start producing this year. Operated by BP with partners Cosmos, SMH and Petrosen, Tortu was a gas discovery made in 2015. It's thought there's up to 15 TCF recoverable gas and it's at a water depth of 2,850 metres, which would make it Africa's deepest oil and gas development. It's to be developed with an FPSO and floating LNG, which you can see in the bottom picture arrived in country on the 15th of February 2024. First oil is expected before the end of 2024. As a quick aside, the GTA project is in Trove, North West Africa, but it can also be found in our Trove LNG database, where you can find details on almost 400 liquefaction, storage and regasification projects globally. Get in touch for more details. If you'd like a separate video focusing on the GTA project, then let us know in the comments. So it's not all been plain sailing. Both these projects, Sangamar and GTA, have experienced substantial delays and both projects are over budget. We're not going to go into this too much, but the reasons for delay range from COVID to supply chain issues to a typhoon. All we'll say is hopefully it's going to be smooth running from here. If you're looking for data on oil and gas, Trove is a place to go. At the bottom here we have the Trove asset tab for the Sangamar field. All the images in this video have come from Trove, and you can see here we've highlighted a few of these images to show that these are high quality images, and we've got a range of maps, seismic lines, well logs, information on the infrastructure, geological write-ups, and so on. So if you want to find out more and get your hands on this data, get in touch with us. Send us an email on info at firstsom.com. So in summary, it's exciting times for Senegal as they are set to become an offshore oil producer. The giant Sangamar field is due to produce its first barrel of oil in a few months time and production from the GTA project is expected to follow closely behind. If you're looking for data in oil and gas, then you need Trove. And if you want to see analogues from around the world for Sangamar or indeed any oil field, then get in touch. And finally, what other videos do you want us to see us do in this region? Leave your comment below and hopefully we'll get round to it. Finally, if you haven't already seen, we're currently running a special introductory offer for Trove Namibia. This is a fantastic deal to get your hands on all of our data from one of the most exciting oil and gas exploration regions in the world. So if you're interested, get in touch. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you back here for the next video.